King Shri Krishna Vare was the greatest emperor South India has produced. When he ascended the throne in 1509, the political condition of the Vijayanagar Empire was very gloomy. The rulers of Orissa were in possession of coastal Andrew up to Nellore. The Sultan of Bijapur wanted to extend the boundaries of his kingdom at the expense of Vijayanagar. Shri Krishvadvara first turned his attention towards the Muslim rulers of the Deccan who combined themselves to wage a jihad against Vijayanagar Nagar. Shri Krishvadvara inflicted a crushing defeat on the combined Muslim army. Rikur was captured in 1512 AD and the Dobrijan of Krishna Tungabhadra came under the control of Shri Krishnadvara. Gulbarga was also captured. Shri Krishnadvara restored the Bamani kingdom to its legal ruler Muhammad R. Shri Krishnadvara next turned his attention on the local chieftains of Amatua. After subjugating Amatua, he conquered Shivanagashan Samudram. Campaign against Orissa Shri Krishnadvara launched five campaigns against the Oriya rulers. He first turned his attention on Udaigiri in Nelor district which was obnegation occupied by the Orissa rulers. The assault on the Udaigiri fort began in 1513 AD. Udaigiri was regarded as an impregnable fort but Shri Krishnadvara succeeded in causing a breach in the fortress and defeated the large Orissa army of Prataparudra. The Oriyas withdrew to Kondavadu. After the capture of Udayagiri Shri Krishnadvara visited Tirupati to pay his homage to Shri Venkateswara. He placed his statue along with those of Chidavi and Tirumaladavi at the entrance of the Tirumala shrine. After rendering his homage to Shri Venkateswara, Shri Krishnadvara launched his second assault against the Oriya rulers. Shri Krishnadvara himself took command and made a vigorous attack on the fort. Finally the Oriyas were forced to surrender. A large number of Gajapati nobles including Prince Virabhadra were captured and sent to Vijayanagar. In the third campaign, Iswada on the banks of the Krishna river was captured. Kondapli on the way towards Golkanda was also captured. The forts in the districts of Nalgondu and Warangal districts were captured. In the fourth campaign Venji was liberated. Rajamundri was captured without any difficulty. Shri Krishnadvara next proceeded to Simakalam and paid homage to Narasimha Swami, the presiding deity of the temple. At Potneru he erected a pillar of victory to commemorate his victories. In the fifth and last campaign Shri Krishnadvara marched against Katak, the capital of the Gajapati rulers. Prince Virabhadra committed suicide in the Vijayanagar prison. Prataparudra Deva was forced to sue for peace. In 1518 a treaty was concluded by which Prataparudra Deva gave his daughter in marriage to Shri Krishnadvara. In return Shri Krishnadvara returned all the territories north of the Krishna river conquered by him to the Orissa ruler. Vijapa The last important campaign of Shri Krishnadvara was against Ismail Adil Shah of Bijapa. The Bijapur Sultan demanded from Shri Krishnadvara the return of Krishna Tungabhadra Dobe taken by the latter in 1512 AD in the battle that followed the Bijapur army was completely rooted. The eldest son of Maham Nagashan Madshah was given the Bamani kingdom. Relations with the Portuguese Shri Krishnadvara maintained friendly relations with the Portuguese. In 1510 Goa became the headquarters of the Portuguese possessions in India. As a result trade and commerce developed. The Vijayanagar ruler was able to procure Arabian horses from the Portuguese traders. The Portuguese supplied guns and other war material to the Vijayanagar ruler which was used in the siege of Rikur. Similarly the Portuguese engineers were engaged in improving the water supply to the city of Vijayanagar. Last Days The last days of the mighty emperor were not happy. His young son Tirumaladeva who was made the ruler of Vijayanagar in order to guarantee his succession to the throne died after a reign of eight months. Shri Krishnadvara learnt that his son was poisoned by the son of his great minister Timarasu. Both the son and father were captured and blinded. Shri Krishnadvara became very unhappy at the turn of events. 
he nominated his half-brother Uakyu to Divru as his successor and died towards the end of 1529. An Estimate of Krishnadvara Shri Krishnadvara occupies a unique place among the rulers of South India. He was a versatile genius and made his mark as a great warrior, able administrator and a liberal patron of art and literature. He had become a legend. Even children and illiterate villagers recall his exploits. The core of his empire, that is the five districts in the southwest of Andhra Pradesh is now known as Yalazima or the land of Sri Krishnadvara. As a warrior he showed his mettle against the enemies of the empire, namely the Muslim rulers of the Deccan and the Gajapati rulers of Orissa. His wars against the Bahmani rulers revealed his military prowess and diplomatic lamatic skill. He restored the Bahmani dynasty twice in order to maintain political stability in the Deccan ruled by many Muslim princes. Similarly his friendly relations with the Portuguese reveal his complete grasp of the realities of the Indian political situation of the 16th century AD. His wars against the Ganapati rulers of Orissa may be regarded as a brilliant achievement in the military history of the time. As an administrator, he proved to be very efficient. Even the remote villages could have the benefits of effective administration. As a patron of art and Telugu literature Sri Krishnadvara was unsurpassed. His period was the golden age of the Telugu literature. Eight literary luminaries popularly known as Ashtadigajas adorned his court. Among them Alasani Pedana, the author of Manu Charitramu was the greatest. He was known as Andhra Kavita Pitamaha. Sri Krishnadvara was a great builder. The Hazararama temple, the Vitalaswami temple at the capital city is attributed to him. In honor of his mother he built a new city called Nagalapuram. In a word Sri Krishnadvara ranks with the greatest emperors of Europe and Asia.